sticking out there. Did I have a an intro last year that was like, Welcome to the 13 Nights of Halloween. And then there was like thunder or something like that. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it does sound familiar. Ah! Welcome. Hi everybody, welcome to the very first episode of the 2013 edition of the 13 Nights of Halloween. No, uh, 2011. 2011? What? We're recording this in September 2011. <laughs> You're saying that this won't be out until 2013? Uh, maybe. Wow. We're, we're kind of going that, a little slower these that days. That seems so. like the future. Imagine what the world would be like in 2013. If you had to predict the, how the world would be different, what, what will 2013 be like? Uh, it'd probably be post-apocalypse by then. So I'm guessing like ash falling from the sky everywhere, uh, like irradiated animal um, mutant kind of creatures roaming. I like that. Everyone will dress in leather. In leather and old, you know, refuse, kind of Mad Max style maybe. Like some, some people will be like just wearing shoulder pads from like footballs, mm. but they'll carry a hockey stick. I like you that. Know, incongruously. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all be like that that cartoon. Did you ever see that cartoon from the 90s where it was Bo Jackson and Wayne Gretzky and Michael Jordan and they were like fighting they were like superhero sports guys? No. But I have heard somebody try and convince me that that was really a show and I was like no, no it wasn't. And it was. they showed me the opening title off on YouTube, which I mean if you're listening in 2013, YouTube was this Back when there was an internet, and back when there were computers that were used for things other than killing, um, <laughs> people could just upload whatever they wanted. They could record something and show it to everyone. And on this channel, somebody had recorded the opening credits to, what was the show called? I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, it was those three, and it was this stupid song that told you how they all got together and what their powers were. You know, it was a very efficient song. It's like 40 seconds long, and it tells you all you need to know in case you don't know sports or in case you've never watched the cartoon before. And uh, it looked so stupid that I kind of wanted to watch it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I saw at least one episode of it. But it was very stupid. I liked that they used Bo Jackson. It was really... Uh... A good way to economize. Oh, because you got football and yeah, you baseball. you got football and baseball with Bo Jackson. And then you, they covered all the big four sports with just the three guys. So they didn't have to you know, pay <laughs> extra rights to somebody else for using their likeness. And they didn't have to animate another dude, which I'm sure costs more money. You know, really, really well planned. They should have got Deion Sanders. Oh, wait, no, he was just baseball and football, too. Is there anybody that did two other sports, like not baseball? It was ba Was there a basketball? Well, Jordan did baseball as well. Oh, there you go. But not at this point. At this point, he was still just Jordan. Mm. It was years later when he went and tried that baseball thing. And I, I think, yeah, he... Unlike Bo Jackson, Jordan never did anything of worth in baseball. Well, but it made for that great story point in Space Jam that they didn't take... The bad guys didn't take Michael Jordan because he yeah. was a baseball player, not a basketball player. Yeah. And so luckily the Looney Tunes had the greatest basketball player to ever live to play on their team because the aliens had made that mistake. Yes, that was very important. I, I thought that that was brilliant. And, you know, I, Except I call them as they, I see them. They took, they took Sean Bradley in that movie. And Sean Bradley was never anything but a very, very tall guy. <laughs> Could they have known that in he nineteen? He could not do five or whenever that was. Anything. He could barely make a basket, and he and, was ridiculously tall. And his head, his like head, would go through the rim if he stood underneath it. <laughs> well, see, in two thousand thirteen, because of mutations, that's, that's, that's typical. Normal. Yeah, that kind of thing is going on. All right, so the point where we, we, I, I feel really bad that we've talked all this time because. You know, in the future, when you're listening to this, there's probably not a lot of free time left when you can listen to things, when you're not fighting for your lives spend or fighting your, for meat. Yeah, spend all your time running from the uh, mutated spider that's the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, I like that. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, anyways, what we're doing here is the 2013 edition of the 13 Nights. Hey, it's 13 and 13. The 13 Nights of Halloween. And um, what we do basically is we talk about fear related topics and Halloween related. Not all Halloween things are really fear related. Like if we talk about shitty candy. <laughs> I don't know if that counts as a fear-related topic, unless you fear, like, what it may do to your in insides or your taste buds. Maybe there's a fear of reprisal if that's what you give out <laughs> there to you trick go. Um, uh, But we're going to talk about that. And also, uh, an important thing to note is this is a special thing that we're doing as sort of a donation drive. We're driving for donations here in a little Fiat. <laughs> Yeah, my computer that I use to assemble the show is really, really, really old. In computer years, it would be like... Announcer man. No, it would make announcer man even look like a young pup. It would be like the, you know, the, the person that you see on the news sometimes. Like, there's an 120-year-old man that lives in India. It's like that guy. That guy still runs a marathon, which kind of is what my computer has to do. It has to do a lot of stuff. It's to the point where it just can't handle it anymore. It uh, freezes up a lot. And what happens once it freezes up is it's done. It's I our can, cue to go for a walk. Yeah, I can, I can restart it and it'll start back up, but then it'll freeze back up at like five minutes or less later. And I can restart it and then it'll freeze back up about two minutes later. And, and the window keeps getting shorter until I can start it back up and it'll freeze up as it's starting up. Mm. And basically, once it freezes up, it's time to just turn it off and leave it for the night. You know, if, if I try and come back sooner than that, then it'll freeze up right away. Um, because it's just really old. It's beyond the age that computers are good for. It's funny because there was a guy that I was talking to today and he's like, oh, I need to get a computer and I want to get a really good one. I don't want to get just some cheap one that's only going to be good for a couple of years. I want one that's good for like 10 years. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I don't know where the hell you're going to find this magic computer that's going to still be worthwhile 10 years from now. But 10 years is like a million years old in computer years. See, and yeah, I remember when you got it, you had all these aspirations. And we did an episode of That Gets My Goat, or we will do it in 2012, about <laughs> uh, what you got the computer for and, and the things that you were going to make money on it with. And so you invested a lot into this computer. You spent more on the computer because you knew you would be using it for work. And it's still had a, an expiration date on it yeah it did yeah I, I spent a more than i normally ever would have dreamed on that and some of the good things is like the program which i use to to do stuff on the computer the, the, the to do stuff to do the podcast stuff on the computer i also bought at that time and i can still use that even if i get a new computer because at least i hope i can generally new computers can run old software but Old computers can't run new software anymore. So, and it generally gets easier and easier for new computers to run old software because the strain or whatever is less and less because each new computer is more beefy than the last. Beefy. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, so what we're, what we're hoping to do, what we're here to beg for, it's time to beg for donations. We're here to beg for donations so that we can replace this computer with something that will work. Like, for example, just a little story. This week, I had an episode ready to go. The demands on my time are a little more, so the day that I was able to work on it, I sat down to work on it, and I started working, and about 20 minutes in, the computer crashed on me, and I was done. I was unable to finish working on it. I had to put the computer to bed, and then put myself to bed and try again the next time that I had a chance. It's to the point where it's even affecting the show and it's making the show come out later than it would. And it already comes out late as it is. So it sucks when <laughs> that gets extended even further. So yeah, donation drive for a computer. So if you can donate, please accept these episodes of That Gets My Goat. 
as a payment for your donation. We're trying to give you something in hopes that you'll give us something back, I guess. Yes, well, well, last year, people really liked the 13 Nights of Halloween that we did. And I'm trying to remember if that was for donation. You know, I believe my goal for that was to ask for donations, and I didn't remember to do it. Does that sound right? Yeah, that does sound right. I think the Dupo mm -hmm. Remo, we actually asked for donations a time or two in that one. But, yeah, I think the 13 Nights of Halloween, we just completely forgot about it. But a couple of people afterwards said that, you know, hey, here's a couple of bucks. Thank you for entertaining me. You know, I, I wish that you could do that all the time. Or I, I, I think Tom even said, what will it cost for to make you guys do another one? Dance, monkeys. <laughs> and so hopefully people will feel that the 10 or so hours that you're about to hear uh, every single day for the next week and a half will be worth whatever you can spare. The cool thing about the 13 Nights of Halloween is that we do a little bit more. We talk about things. It's a, it's a little bit more than your normal That Gets My Goat. Because we'll talk about things in some of the episodes, but we do have planned two stories written by us that we're going to read and perform and put out as part of the last few episodes. Because last year, uh, we ended the marathon <clears throat> with me unearthing a story from like 1990 that I wrote called The Bend, and it was way too long but it was indicative of what really scared me when I was a teenage boy. And then we did an episode where we talked about it as though we had run it on the show. And, uh, you know, whether it was good or not, it was cool to prevent, to prevent, it was cool to present a story and to talk about it. And I guess we'll do that again, but doubly so this year. Yeah. It was, didn't I? Oh, did you some do some kind of really short story or something like that? I thought I had a story Oh, so you on did one too. last year as well? I thought so. I thought you forced me to. It was um, something I'd written But it wasn't the earlier. world's shortest ghost story. That was No, like. no, that was another time. I can't remember what it was, though. But I swear that there was something that I had it, uh, involved in it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I could be wrong, though. Maybe I did nothing, and I just want to take the credit. <laughs> but this time around, there will be a story. A story that I wrote while waiting for my car to get fixed. Cool. Hopefully it will scare you. I don't know if it will or not. It's not by nature a scary topic. So. <laughs> well, no, neither is mine. And I wrote mine kind of as a dare to myself to see if I could write a scary story about a non-scary topic. And, and we'll get to that when it's... <clears throat> yeah, we're not going to steal the thunder it. from it now. But the time of year when this happens and things start to get cold and the leaves start to fall... There is something, I don't know, though, I don't want to say that it's eerie, but there, there is something inherently ominous about the falling of the leaves and about the wind blowing and about the chill in the air. And, and perhaps it's just tradition that, you know, for hundreds of years, at least in our culture, we've associated that with spookiness, with the occult, with the supernatural. Um, but I, I, I would imagine that in, in England, you know, you get tons of fog during that time, right? When the, when the weather starts to get cold. And, 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 and I always think of, you know, the, the something out on the moors when, <laughs> when I think of fog. and You know what I'm talking about? Cool. Yeah, maybe it's got something to do with just that whole, you know, spring. Everybody thinks of birth and rebirth and, and fall is just kind of like death. It's basically... The death of the year or the weather or whatever you want. The death of the sun as we head into winter and everything, you know, all the leaves, all those green leaves that were born in springtime are now dying. And, you know, I don't, are we going to talk sounds and skittering in this I think, episode or no, will we I save we'll, it? We'll do that in Okay, the well, we'll save this it. This is our we'll, introduction. Episode. We'll mention it in, the, in that, <laughs> that episode, but the leaves, I think... You know, just the sound that they make and stuff when they're blown around by the uh, the wind is, is kind of a scary sound. Well, also, the, yes, the crunching of the leaves when somebody walks on them, um, uh, the rustling, the, the sound mm -hmm. of movement. And uh, because this is a podcast, you know, sound holds a lot more weight than visuals, definitely than taste. 
in more ways than one. Then, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll say only announcer men were here to uh, chime in. Then smell, you know, and, and and so it's a good thing too because way too many farts in our. Uh, show it's a good thing there's no smell involved i think there's way too many farts anytime you're involved in anything <laughs> but you know just having worked on audio for as many years as as i have now and you've worked in video and audio a lot longer but for me it's almost all audio now you learn to appreciate the subtlety of sound or i mean just the the fact that or let's say that right now while you and i are talking you can hear if you listen carefully, you know, a, a, a wind, maybe a, a spooky wind of, of, of trees, of, of air blowing in between trees. And it almost sounds like a woman crying out or, you know, some some voice. And it, just that little subtle underlying of a sound can add, maybe on a subconscious level, a scariness too. A story or, or, and you know, it doesn't have to be scariness, but because it's Halloween, that's what it comes to my mind. And so, yeah, we're going to talk about those things, but we're not going to talk about it now. I'm going to cut you off. Oh, okay. Because you're turning this into the scary sound episode, which we're not going to do right now, but that will be to come. <laughs> okay. So that's a little tease to whet your appetite. Is whet your appetite with an H? It is for some strange reason. I think it's got to do with like sharpening stones. Those are called wet stones, and I think it's with an H. And so it might be like sharpening it up. Doo, 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 doo. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, th these are all to come over the next, I guess, 12 days from now. Today is day number one. And uh, if you f can feel it in your heart to toss a couple bucks our way f in thanks or in I don't know what whatever you're motivated by it's all good guilt uh whatever <laughs> uh, we will put that in the coffers and hopefully build up enough to be able to replace the old aging announcer man computer announcer man age computer um well, tell people how they can donate to the show oh, okay because this is uh presumably on the blog that's right yeah this is on the blog so if you are listening to this on the blog, there won't be the donation buttons. You'll have to go to the main Dune Steve site. Can you site. put donation buttons on the page for this episode? or Maybe. Probably. Oh, well, let's just put a... We'll put a link on every one of these daily podcasts to the payment pages. Is that possible? Yeah, I think... I don't, I don't know what's possible, but probably. I will make a possible thing that you can click on. I'm pretty sure that there is a way to do it all. Just copy and paste the code. I'm sure it will work. But yeah, we will... But, uh, okay, but if they're just listening to this on their own device, and they're not on the blog... Which is most likely, probably. Yes. You go to doonsteef.com, and right there on the right side is three little buttons. You can donate once, donate once a month, or donate once a quarter, which is every four months, I believe. That's what? Four and quarter? No, it's every three months, right? Yes, because of this economy, it's now three months. Wow, interesting. But yeah, you can you can uh, sign up for any one of those. Yeah, you just press that button and you go in and you donate with PayPal. And you can, you know, you don't have to have even a PayPal account, I don't think. I think you can just donate with a credit card through PayPal. I'm not sure exactly how it works because I'm not a real PayPal know-it-all kind of a guy. But but yeah, we've got it there and you can donate. And we will. Uh, we even have incentive episodes. By this point... I'm pretty certain that the very final Broken Mirror story will be available for you as the the incentive episode. And it's an awesome story that you're going to love. And it has a special guest on the episode. And we do a special post-story episode with the special guest. And the special guest is very special. It's the specialist. So, you know, even if you are only considering it you're going to want just for the special guest maybe you won't but you, i don't care donate anyways <laughs> <laughs> you don't care <laughs> but again we we're doing this for donations but we're also doing it because i love to talk about halloween topics and because we're also trying our darndest 
to get our stories out there, to, to get into the habit of sharing our work, of, of just putting it out there and saying, okay, this is something that I wrote. I hope you like it, but I'm not going to quail in fear at the possibility that you don't like it and not share it with anybody, which has been my habit for more than 20 years. Yeah. I, I think I need to do the same. I, I think I'm less afraid than Rish is, but I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've run into some comments that have killed my momentum in the past, and I need to find a way beyond that so that I can not have my momentum killed, be able to keep going so that I can be as prolific as Rish Outfield. Oh, see, and I want to be as prolific as Chris Monroe. Yeah, there you that go. That guy... I mean, I, I've complained about, I'm sorry, praised him many times before. <laughs> the guy writes a story a week and he puts them right out there on his blog for you to read, for anybody to read. And uh, that's inspiring, man, that he somehow lit a fire under himself and said, I'm going to do this every single week. And if, you know, it's Thursday and I publish on Friday, I got to write something right now. I want to be like that. And yeah, I, yeah. I want to be able to say, "Hey, I wrote this, and if you don't like it, there's another one coming." <laughs> Instead of, "If you don't like it, uh, it's I will quit." Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't like it, there's another one coming, and you probably will like that one even less. Yes. So there. Uh, yeah. So that's definitely what we're what we're after with this. We want to uh, be able to share our memories of a time our memories and our feelings and our uh our joys etc of a time that we really enjoy in the year and hopefully yeah we can we can be a part of your holiday this year hopefully there'll be no hurricanes that come along to cause any problems and everybody can go out and get dressed up in some kind of slutty big bird costume or whatever it is that you whatever slutty thing you choose to dress up as yeah see i saw some buddy in a slutty Miley Cyrus costume the other day. I just like, wow, I, who would have guessed that that could be possible? Yeah, that would be weird. Maybe they'll have something like that in the, in the future in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she'll never go that way. <laughs> yeah, she'll always be our little Disney princess. I'm so glad that that'll never happen. Okay, folks, I think uh, we'll call that the... Uh, we've covered everything, right, for our intro here? That's our inaugural episode, yes. You can find it over at www.doonsteef.blogspot.com each and every day, uh, right? We're going to post one of these. Yep, each day there'll be a new one. So come back again. We'll see you here each week. No, that doesn't work. Week, my friends. I'm sure I'm get sure a smile. I'm sure a smile, yes, from... <laughs> We'll see you here each day, my friends. You're sure to have a smile. Um, yeah. So anyways, yeah, we'll see you uh, tomorrow. Thanks for listening. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! <laughs> that Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons, non-commercial, no delivers license. But you have my permission to steal it.